Thinking of getting a side-by-side -side shotgun, but you're afraid to pull the trigger? Check this out. How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. You know, I've spent the better part of the past few years trying to find the perfect side-by-side -side shotgun. I've always loved the classic look of a side-by-side -side shotgun. I like the tradition behind it. And if anyone's ever watched my channel before, they know I like tradition. Uh, you know, I like guns that tell a story. I like guns that have a history behind them. And I've learned a lot the past few years. And I wanted to share that. So there's a lot of iconic brands out there that a lot of people are familiar with. You know, we have the iconic American brands such as L.C. Smith, Parker, A.H. Fox, uh, the Savage Fox Model B. You know, and those were guns that I'd read a lot about when I was younger. And, you know, they're great guns and I really wanted to like them. And, you know, as I held a few of them, man, they are heavy. They have long barrels and they're hard to find in anything other than a 12 gauge. And so, you know, they weren't really balanced that well. Uh, it was just a big gun and I, I didn't want another 12 gauge. We've got a couple here. So I started to expand my search a little bit. You know, we have the Purdy shotguns, the Holland and Holland from the UK. And while they're probably the prettiest guns, uh, they're by far the most expensive. And when I say expensive, I mean like six figure expensive, like new car, new house expensive. Uh, yeah, so that was out of the ballpark for me. Looking further, most new production side-by-sides nowadays come from Italy and Spain, uh, a little bit from France, I believe. And I found that the Spanish guns were probably the best quality side-by-side -side shotguns you could get for the price, so the best bang for your buck. And those guns include companies such as Grula, Garbi, AYA, Arizabalaga, Arietta, Ugardachia. Uh, some really good quality guns uh, have been coming out of Spain. And basically what Spain has done is they've taken the classic English style side-by-side -side shotgun and basically replicated it very well. So their shotguns look very similar to the Purdy, the Holland and Holland. Um, they're beautiful guns and they kind of have that English style to them. And you'll see that a lot of these regions have their own style, their own nuances. Um, on how they design their guns. I had a specific gauge I wanted. I wanted a 20 gauge. So from there, I narrowed it down to five categories that I was evaluating to find that perfect side-by-side -side shotgun. So I was looking at the style of the gun, the foregrip, the trigger and the grip, the locks, and lastly, probably the most important would be the fit and finish of the gun. So the first general category of side-by-side -side shotguns you'll find are the classic English side-by-side -side shotgun, and that's what this Gorilla 216 RB that I bought represents. And the classic English side-by-side -side shotgun typically has splinter forend, double triggers, side locks, straight grip, beautiful wood, usually some engraving. Um, and the whole concept of this gun is, it's designed to be comfortable carrying all day in the field. Shoulders quick, uh, light, feels kind of petite in the hands. On the other end of the spectrum, we have America's vision of a side-by-side -side shotgun. So my father's side-by-side -side 20 gauge is a Savage Fox Model B. Um, again, 20 gauge, a little heavier, a little bulkier. It's got what's called a beaver tail foregrip, box lock, pistol grip, double triggers. Um, but a gun like this is designed more in the realm of competitive shooting, maybe trap shooting or live pigeon shooting that used to be done in Europe. You know, so it's not intended to be carried all day long, not intended to be shouldered quickly. You know, you shoot, put it back in the rack, shoot, put it back in the rack. Um, so a little more heft and whatnot is a little more tolerable in a situation like that. But at the heart and soul of every side-by-side -side are the locks. And you'll see two types of locks on most side-by-sides. You're gonna see what's called a side lock, and then you'll see a box lock. Um, and basically what the locks are it's what translates the trigger pull to the gun going boom. And what differentiates a side lock versus a box lock is the locks 
are on the side of the body of the gun. There are some imposters out there. You will see some manufacturers producing box locks with metal plates on the side to imitate a side lock. They're not a shoe side lock, they're a box lock with a metal plate on the side. Um, whereas on the Savage Fox Model B, this is what would be considered a box lock. The locks um, are found within the body of the gun. So the fundamental difference between the two is a box lock, a little simpler to produce, cheaper to produce, less parts, um, less intricate. Whereas the side locks, has, it's a little more intricate of a mechanism to fire the gun and uh, there's more parts. The advantage of a side lock is you get a crisper trigger feel, um, but they both serve, a, serve the purpose well. So while the locks are basically the heart of the gun, they make the gun go off, the trigger and the grip work in tandem to provide a good shooting experience. In your classic English side-by-side, -side, such as this one here, it's the most common to have a double trigger in conjunction with a straight grip. And the reason behind that is, when you pull up, and you pull that first trigger, which fires the right barrel, and you go for a follow-up shot, your hand has to slightly come back to pull that second trigger. And with a straight grip, it's designed to allow your hand to slide straight back. It doesn't really have to change position. It just slightly comes straight back then to fire the left barrel. Um, so the triggers and the grip work in tandem. Now on this particular gun, you'll see that we've got a pistol grip with a double trigger. And you typically will find that when a gun has a pistol grip, it's usually accompanied with a selective single trigger. And the reason for that is if you pull up to fire the gun, and I go to slide my hand back to that second trigger, my hand slightly changes position. And it is a little bit uncomfortable. Um, it's not a natural motion on this gun to come back to pull that second trigger. So you'll see with competitive shooting, they will have a pistol grip on those side-by-sides with a single selective trigger. So basically they just have to pull up, pull the trigger as fast as they can pull it. You know, and as far as, you know, pistol grips are concerned, I originally wanted a gun with a pistol grip. I kind of felt that look better. I always liked that little bit of extra architecture. But over time I've grown to like the straight grip. And now that I understand how the two function with each other, um, I'll take the, the straight grip and double trigger hands down any day over a pistol grip and double trigger. So to keep it simple, pistol grip, go with the single selective trigger. Straight grip, double trigger. So those two function perfect with each other. You're gonna see two types of forends on a side-by-side -side shotgun. This one has what's called a splinter forend, and you'll see, you know, in the English style of guns and the English style of shooting, the hand typically goes forward on the barrels, oftentimes way ahead of the foregrip. And in that sense, the forend serves to hold the gun together. It allows for a more well-balanced gun, in my opinion. Having a splinter forend, uh, I think they look nicer. Uh, they're less intrusive. They definitely have less to hold on to, so there's less control once that gun is shouldered. But they do, they provide a well-balanced gun, light gun, you know, keeps the, the uh, weight down a lot on the gun. Now the other type of forend you'll see is what's known as a beaver tail forend. A little chunkier forend, a little thicker, more to hold on to. Adds a lot more weight to the front of the gun, which I think affects the balance of the gun. Um, so when I pull this gun up, it does feel a little more front heavy. It adds a little more weight to the gun, so if it's a gun you're gonna carry all day long in the field, uh, you'll probably notice it by the end of the day. That's why you'll see the features you see in this gun on competitive shooting guns, whereas a gun that's gonna be used in the field, you'll see more of that traditional style. But, I mean, it does, it gives you more to hold on to, for sure. So when it comes to the fit of a gun, that's probably the most important aspect of buying a shotgun. And Americans like myself, we're guilty of going into a gun shop, looking for a particular brand, kind of have an idea of what we want, what size, what gauge, and we go in and we pick out the gun off the shelf, buy it, take it home. Never consider being fitted for the gun. And you know, over in Europe, it's pretty standard protocol when you buy a shotgun to get fitted for the shotgun. Uh, and I think that's something that we really overlook in the US. Um, and it's the most important. You point a shotgun, you don't aim it, right? So having it fit, having it be an extension of your body is crucial um, because when you pull up, 
everything needs to be right there in alignment. And, and you hear a lot of stories of, you know, people inheriting their fathers, Elsie Smith or Parker, and they just can't shoot it. And it's probably because the gun doesn't fit correctly. I would recommend if there's a place that's handy to you, that can fit you to a shotgun, uh, that would be perfect. I live in Northern Maine, I don't have access to any of that. I was fortunate enough that a lot of people around me were big into to guns and side-by-sides, and I got to hold a lot of different side-by-sides, and actually one of the guys that is a friend of mine had the exact gun that I ended up buying. It was a Gorilla 216 RB, he's about the same size that I am. I held his quite a bit, and it fit me phenomenally. And so I knew the dimensions of that gun, and I knew how the gun felt, and that's kind of what guided me towards the Gula 216 RB. Um, I considered some other ones, but I was a little hesitant because I, again, I, I couldn't hold them, I couldn't get fitted for them, and I didn't want to buy something that didn't fit me right, or I didn't like how it felt. Predominantly why I went towards the Gula. And then as far as aesthetics concerned, that kind of comes down to personal preference. You know, as I mentioned when it came to the grip, I really kind of like the pistol grip to start with. I like that extra architecture on the grip, but it didn't function well with the traditional double trigger that I was gonna go with. So you know, and you'll see a lot of the manufacturers, they will have different methods for finishing their guns. They'll have a tendency to use a certain colored walnut, like you'll see some companies that'll go with darker hued walnuts, versus some companies will use kind of a reddish hue. You know, so the, the finish, the type of wood, the amount of grain, and that's gonna vary from gun to gun. And that's you know where it comes into looking at a lot of different guns, handling a lot of different guns, and really taking your time. The amount of engraving, you know you can get you know a nice side lock that's just blued, or a case finish, which is kind of that Damascus steel looking finish, uh, or coin finish like this one uh, with some engraving. So aesthetics kind of comes down to your personal preference and what you're looking for in a side-by-side. -side. So if you've made it with me this far, thumbs up. There's a lot more to think about when buying a side-by-side -side shotgun than I first realized. Through the course of my journey, I learned a lot about side-by-sides, what to look for, kind of what I liked, what I was looking for in a shotgun. You know, that kind of matriculated over time, what I thought I wanted to start with changed the more I learned about side-by-side -side shotguns. And if anyone is interested in getting a side-by-side -side shotgun, I would highly recommend getting this book. So I've got a friend who's big into side-by-side -side shotguns, and for any of his friends or acquaintances that are interested in buying a side-by-side -side shotgun, he will buy this book for him. You know, this is what turned me on to Spanish side-by-side -side shotguns. It goes deep into the history and the tradition of, of Spanish side-by-sides. A lot of the content on my channel is big on traditions, especially when it comes to hunting and fishing. I feel like a lot of those traditions are dying. And this book goes into the Spanish tradition of making shotguns, runs deep. And it's kind of a dying tradition. You can't go to school to learn how to make a handmade shotgun from scratch. It's something that takes a lot of years um, and a lot of interest in, from what I understand, not a whole lot of pay. These guys are craftsmen and, you know, they specialize in different aspects of the gun. And again, it's, it's traditions that are passed down from builder to builder, engraver to engraver. And it takes a lot of years to refine those skills. And there's less and less of the new generation coming in that's interested in building guns like these in Spain. Um, so it might be a thing of the past here and not too long. So yeah, if you're interested in that and the types of guns that are available, um, this book, it'll go through what to look for in a gun. Again, all those little nuances I just shared with you, you know, I, I learned a lot of them from this book. Um, so really good book. It's called The uh, Spanish Best, The Fine Shotguns of Spain by uh, Terry Wyland, I think is how you say his last name. So excellent book. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested. Um, I'm sure it's available on Amazon and, and all those places. So, yep, hope, you know, hope this was informative. I wanted to share my journey and how I got to this point. I'd learned a lot over the past three or so years. Maybe help streamline that process if someone's interested in getting a side-by-side -side shotgun. You know, if you have any questions or want to say anything, leave them in the comments below. Shoot me an email, anything. Um, I'd be glad to help. Uh, maybe point into some res other resources if you're looking at getting a side-by-side -side shotgun. So, um, yeah, something I wanted to share. You know, it's been a long journey. And I learned a lot, so I uh, wanted to share that with everybody. So, hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, get outside. It's good for the soul. See ya.